So coming back to the blood pressure distributions we talked about previously, we said that moving the threshold of the test will change the proportion of people falsely and correctly classified as diseased and as healthy. Or let's pick another example relating to heart failure. Let's say we have a group of 10 patients with heart failure and a group of 10 healthy controls without heart failure. This is the concentration of BNP or brain natriuretic peptide, a marker of heart failure. So people in the heart failure group on average have higher levels of BNP. One's up here, one's here, and so forth. Individuals without heart failure have lower levels, but as we've seen previously, there will be some overlap. So if we set our threshold at a lower level, we'd correctly classify eight out of the 10 diseased, two would be falsely classified as healthy. However, seven out of the 10 healthy controls would be falsely classified as diseased, whereas three would be correctly classified as non-diseased. What are the sensitivity and specificity? The sensitivity would be calculated as eight true positives divided by all diseased folks, or 80%. And the specificity would be calculated as three true negatives divided by all non-diseased individuals, or 30%. And what happens if we move the threshold to a much higher level? Well, in this case, we'd only pick up two diseased individuals or true positives, and we'd miss eight people or false negatives. Turning to the non-diseased, we'd correctly classify a much larger proportion of non-diseased individuals. So nine out of 10 non-diseased would be correctly classified, and only one individual would end up as a false positive. So the sensitivity is two divided by 10 or 20% and the specificity is nine divided by 10 or 90%. So moving the threshold is usually a compromise between sensitivity and specificity. As one goes up, the other one goes down and vice versa. Sensitivity and specificity are great for public health purposes because they tell us how many diseased individuals in our population we're going to pick up with the test and how many non-diseased will be able to rule out. However, the clinician needs to know slightly different indicators of validity because she's confronted with positive or negative test results and will have to decide what to do with them. And these additional indicators are going to be covered in the next lessons. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.